You are live. I am live. Okay, this is your, uh, I don't know, 7 minute and 20 and uh, uh, 40 second morning mark. <laughs> Two, one, mark. Well, you know, like we needed to be within the second of the five seconds. Yeah, I'll get random until something happens. Nap time. All right. As always, for those of physically in the back, but he can't join us today. Oh, come on. Thank you, Dave. Uh, which button? Fourth from the left. Fourth yeah. from the left, all the way down. Okay. Control that thing. I like it better with all of them out. <laughs> that was my feeling. I hope I wasn't snoring during your talk this morning, Dennis. <laughs> I, I noticed. That was better. <laughs> but then I. I, I put a bunch of people to sleep. Well, that was more waking up at 3.30 this morning than what you had to say. Do you want to uh, tell me in advance and I'll open some windows? Is there anything in particular that struck you about the embedded systems? I forgot. Really. Good. Are these the uh, half inch? Which? The drives we have here. This one here is a two and a half inch. Uh, they have a terabyte range. They have Solid a state drive, terabyte range, probably not on sale. Here's a terabyte one. It's on sale for only four eighty nine ninety five. SATA. This is a SATA terabyte SSD. Anyway, I think uh, I'm ready to get the test at uh, South State Tests. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Five. 
It's all the rage. So do I have to stand on the soapbox? So there we are. Here we are. Welcome to the afternoon session of the Silicon Valley Fourth Interest Group. And uh, welcome to those of you on the uh, internet. Uh, in particular, uh, those of you who are watching this uh, and feel you might have some presentation you care to deliver. We are seeking, uh, actively seeking remote presenters. So uh, subscribe to the mailing list. Drop me a line. Uh, if you uh, are watching this, you probably know how to reach us. So please do. Uh, let's see. Other business. I uh, can't think of any right off the top of my head. Uh, so, as many of you know, this month marked the end of support for Windows XP. So you can now no longer download Microsoft Security Essentials. I kind of wonder, uh, recently I had uh, the opportunity to uh, install an old copy of Windows XP on a laptop and downloaded a huge number of patches and fixes and updates and things. And the question in my mind is, am I still going to be able to do that next week? And uh, the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> so it should be interesting to see what happens going forward with Windows XP, whether you can buy a, a CD or DVD with all of the patches for, <laughs> for XP going forward. No new ones, but you'll certainly want all the old ones. As Microsoft Incorporated 
I cannot in good conscience produce such a thing. It would encourage you to continue using Windows XP when there is a better product available. Uh, you'll get no last. Do you mean Linux? <laughs> As Microsoft, I, I feel it's all I could use. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is this is the SCF, the Spacecraft Control Facility, uh, more recently called uh, Onizuka Air Force Station until it was decommissioned. Uh, they just started demolishing the actual building. So if you uh, if you go there, you can probably see, you know, <laughs> big voids between floors where the uh, the wires and the air conditioning ducts and and so forth. Uh, this thing had a cooling plant next to it that was a substantial fraction of the size of the actual building. It was great. And so they are not well, they recycle. You got to listen Sorry. to this idea of there are people out there that want to hear you. Right. They're on the internet. Yes. Use the microphone. Okay. <laughs> no, he's using my microphone. Yeah. It's okay. The uh, yeah. the the equipment there it will only be recycled to other Air Force uh, installations. No, it's all gone. All the computers. No, no, that's what gone. I meant. What I mean is, if it's not going to another Air Force base, it gets uh, uh, ground up. Well. <laughs> Probably a good thing since yeah. it's it was all coal-fired CDC computers. <laughs> the the great thing about this is that when they decided that they needed a duplicate facility to actually do the job that this was doing, so that this could become, uh, you know, less important to our national security. Uh, one of the problems with this place is it was in RPG range of Highway 101, so you could just pull up in your uh, in your Volkswagen bus, get out, blast the bejesus out of the uh, the spacecraft control facility, and then drive off. But uh, when they built the the duplicate in Colorado, they just said, "Oh, we want everything the same." So they had to get all these antique computers installed by antique guys. It was great fun. I hope they've upgraded since then. It reminds me it reminds me some years ago, well maybe a year or two ago, all the computers, all the PCs that they used to control these drones were all infected by this mystery virus. And they were pretty sure it wasn't causing any harm, but they couldn't get rid of it for some reason. It was weird. I guess we will never know what actually happened, what the end game, what the end result of that was. Let's hope they've gotten the problem solved somehow. So if anybody else has something new and exciting or something they saw or something interesting to talk about during this time, just speak up. I'll just continue blathering. But uh, these guys. Flying saucers over Ann Arbor. Please. Kevin, while I was reading about replacing, installing wind turbines offshore of the Fukushima reactor disaster, we're going to build a it's not just a shrine, it's an actual lots of watts wind farm right there. On that page, the article said, click here for generating electricity from passing trains in, in Japan, burying, mostly burying, turbines so that it, between the ties or the rails, the train rushes by and blows air to spin the turbines to make electricity. And nowhere in the article does it say April Fool. <laughs> it's free. You got to. Well, there are actually many farmers out in the middle of nowhere who will lay a long wire along the ground right under the 
high tension wires that pass through the right away there, and they just you know hook up to both ends of that, and they they've built a long skinny transformer. Yes. <laughs> charge the sun? <laughs> oh, no, they're going to charge uh, the new process uh, the cost of solar cells. It's, they are going to tax the new people buying solar systems so they cannot be the energy and they can get a piece of the pie instead of just the energy piece. We're the water company. We're going to charge you more if you use less water. Right. Our job is to provide you it's either Louisiana or some other state. The new state book is the Bible. You know that one. Well, yeah, I guess the California state rock was uh, was serpentine. Yes, uh, and then they had this big hissy fit. God, it's got asbestos in it. It's the work of the devil. <laughs> So they, there was a movement afoot to decertify it as the state rock. Uh, yeah, California actually has a state reptile. Uh, the official one is the uh, desert tortoise, but I always thought that the state reptile was Gray Davis. Oh, yes. We, we digress. So how many heard about the heart bleed uh, vulnerability, shall we call it? Yeah. Apparently, uh, they haven't learned anything since Maltics. So, I recommend it to you. It didn't start out particularly secure, but it got a lot better. <laughs> well, yeah, robot legs to space. Legs to the uh, space station robot. And those legs look awful skinny, the guy said, but they're not legs, they're arms. Think of them as arms in space. This is a pretty popular device, the iOmega external USB hard drive. Hilariously enough, between the end of the box and the disk drive is a void. And the only thing holding the disk drive from unplugging itself from its printed circuit board is that piece of tape where the arrow is. So it can slide a, uh, maybe three-eighths of an inch uh, to the left on this picture and disconnect itself. Eh, pretty much uh, no, hardly any force at all, any impact at all. So the moral of the story is that if you have a 3D printer, and you could do this design for uh, for a little shim to stick between the end of the case and the end of the drive. You might uh, make a lot of iOmega driver uh, uh, iOmega drive owners very happy. There was some speculation as to what chicken McNuggets are are made of. Just yes. No, that's left as an exercise for the student. We were talking this morning about hyperterminal. You can actually buy the latest and greatest version of hyperterminal. Yeah, well, 60 bucks a pop for the download. OK, there's no such thing as a DB9. It's the DE9. We've been over this. I was amazed earlier this week, uh, it may have been a week or two ago, the uh, the price on a 120 gigabyte 
Solid state drive. Seventy six bucks. Yes. Then there's this forty five dollar three hundred and twenty gigabytes set uh, spinning rust device, which kind of impressed me. So Where's the terabyte one? Only uh, 490 for a terabyte solid state drive. These are these are crucial technologies. I don't know how good their build quality is, but how good it is or bad it is or whatever. So anybody else? Embedded Systems Show now called EE Live was called what? Design Design West. Yeah, well, they've had a East and West embedded system show for quite a while now. It seems to be like the only trade show left. <laughs> In this well, there's the RTECC thing, which is somewhat smaller and seems to continue happening in a lot of places during the course of the year. Oh, well. Uh... Why don't we take a short break and uh, catch up with the coffee from this morning, and we'll be back in a little while with uh, with Brad.
You can actually point the camera somewhere else, though. <laughs> you. you are live. Mm. See, we're doing the sharing of the screen from the computer. He actually has the picture instead of... <laughs> That's a good thing. Because, of course, I'll have something to gesticulate about. <laughs> yeah, I was going to give a talk. If I had a talk to give, I was going to give a talk as if I were in another room. You may actually just go to another room mm -hmm. and use the webcam in the, in the laptop and share my screen with my headset to talk. George, do you need to turn the battery around in this, or is the block ready to go? No, so. uh, I've just changed the battery, so I get, I've used other old batteries. Oh, wow. uh, okay, what size are they? Okay, I might have those. I, you're assuming I have something to point at, other than just playing with the object well, the button. Using the, uh, using the they lasted a long time. Mm. Oh man, were they expended in combat? Over a period of years. Yeah, you can see that they're not. Here they are. They're what they're. Uh, Anal <laughs> uh, Drop them in face down. Yeah, not for sale. Store. I keep thinking there's something devilishly clever that could be done with a laser pointer, but then that would require me to actually think of something devilishly clever. Oh, yeah. Bright and shiny, man. Yeah. What I want is a uh, There's a battery recycling where I live. You could also drop off at Orchard and Radio Shack. They both take batteries. But what I want is a pointing device brings the mouse to you go to these talks and there are three or four screens. He's had his laser pointer and points at one of them. And unfortunately, yeah. sitting on the other side of the room, you can't see what the hell. Yeah. yeah. Well, the sad part is the, the tracking, the tracking, the tracking of the, the laser pointer got when I was in grad school. There was actually a prototype of this, but it was never turned into. It was really like flaky. I mean, it was terrible. It was as good as computer vision would. I how well it works, but I can imagine. They've got this ring now. Oh no! You can point with your hand. Yeah, older ones. Gun owners to be required to have guns that are linked to the that they have to wear. So that's the idea. The question I have is, you know, first of all, what's it going to take to jam that? <laughs> or someone new who's Could you start your talk by pointing out that you've got a couple of shirts? Oh, sure. Available so that we can maybe be rid of them? Right up. Right at the end of this chapter. Oh, indeed. Well, I mean, that's just Oh, 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 we could do that. If you, that would require. That's the clever bit about actually being in the hangout instead of really. Of course, did, did that be in the hangout, yeah. Balanced? <laughs> no, just actually connected to the web screen. Yes. Yeah. Let me unmute the hangout. <laughs> Try it. Uh. 
Make sure I got the uh the sound check done, so near fear connection. Oh yeah? Is it on? Should the mic? It should be on today. Hello. Oh, the switch is on. Hello. I can't tell which mic. Turn the other one off. Hello. 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 Okay. We'll pretend it works. <laughs> oh. oh, let me turn it off. Here, here. Let's actually. Let's not worry about it. Yes, it was. It was. It was. That's what's weird. But, okay. Just let it make its way. We'll have clear slides. <laughs> At least we've got clear slides. So the slides that actually have surprising little content. Well, they haven't put up a schedule that you were talking about. But they they really had to have who's going to be presenting. That would be too easy, right? Okay. Now we're going to have on their site. Of course, they are, because at least it occurred to me that. Yeah. Would, but that would suggest that the laser pointer is not a good choice because, of course, then. <laughs> yes. But I have nothing to point at, so I'm really holding the lazy pointer as I am. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. I don't actually have anything to point at. So. Okay. Clear slides, Trump. So. <laughs> yes, indeed. Shall we, gentlemen? Okay. Before, before my talk, I wouldn't. Kevin is very slow model. Uh, there's a large left and right here in my car. Uh, cool. Kevin, oh, we'll do it again for the camera. I will. I gotta find you. <laughs> 
on moving. I know. I knew this just to annoy you. I, I know that. Is that there you go. Crotch? Is that the crotch shot? <laughs> no, it's not quite. <laughs> All right. Mm. Uh -huh. Oh, it has a light on it. That's nice. That's that bit. Does it have the lights on? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a large and an extra, extra large. Oh, the switch controls the line? Or is that yeah, that's it's intriguing? Pop that controls the line. Uh -huh. Sneaky. All righty then. Uh, so, uh, hoping to contribute content to the pile, I decided uh, that I, after a little bit of thought that I I believe that I had all the pieces on the web. Uh, and you'll see what I mean by that in a moment. Uh, as it turns out, I may really have uh, overstated uh, that I had at my disposal. Well, well, let's talk about it. Of course, my phone is not responding. Hello. So, color forth as I'm sure you all are. Uh, Chuck's lovely uh, a variant of forth that involves pre-parsed color uh, in place of uh, interpret compile state and uh, a very unique standalone environment. Um, it has this sort of flavor to it, where you've got the word definitions in red and their definition in green. Yellow words are uh, are executed, and sundry other colors do sundry other things. White as comments um, leads to uh, programs that are uh, surprisingly uh, um, single-lined words, and uh, there's there's some nice nice things that come from it. Um, so the vehicle by which I uh, I had mind of uh, putting it on the web is uh, is my day. Uh, uh, native client, uh, which is a, a feature in the Chrome web browser that allows you to safely run machine code in the browser. Um, it, uh, it's per architecture, so there's, there's a different model of, uh, of how to run code safely that depends on whether you're x86-32 or 64 or ARM. Um, and uh, the basic idea is that you're, you're trying to, uh, you don't just allow any machine code to run, you allow machine code that meets certain constraints, namely that it's chopped up into uh, small little blocks that you can uh, unambiguously disassemble, that you enter at the beginning of the block, um, and that when you, you do uh, indirect flow control, you always do it to an aligned address so that you know that you're not sort of stepping off into unexpected code. And then all, all of the I.O. happens through a well-defined interface. So it's, in principle, as secure as JavaScript, um, arguably more, potentially more so because where JavaScript relies on uh, security by construction. You, you, you make sure that the code that you're generating is, uh, is safe because you know, your JavaScript engine generated it. Um, with, uh, with native client, there's a, a validator that is checking that your code uh, is, is valid in, in some sense. Um, it has low overhead versus native code. Um, our, our, the x86-32 sandbox, in particular, has, uh, in, in the ideal case, something on the order of 5% overhead, so very low overhead, because generally most machine code is allowed to be uh, left alone. Um, the x86-64 sandbox is not as efficient because there's some extra masking that has to go on. Um, and then there's, it's verified at load time, and then you're safe. But of course, portability. Uh, so we, we just recently, a couple of months now ago, um, finally released onto the open web uh, portable native client. So, a uh, portable native client is built on top of conventional native client, and what it lets you do is to take a type flattened version of the LVM. LVM is a uh, it's an acronym stands for low level virtual machine, but what it really is is it's a it's a stack of uh, of uh, compilers, and it's a uh, in particular they have a very nice um, very nice sort of uh, architecture neutral um, assembly language that's a little bit. It's a little bit uh, higher level than what you would normally think of as an assembly language, not quite as high level as C. Um, and in fact, the version of it that we use as, a, as our wire format is actually a, a type flattened version, uh, where it's, imagine C, but you've, uh, you're only allowed uh, sort of ints and cares and, and pointers to ints and cares. Um, so you're, you know, you, there's no, there's no uh, structs. Uh, you, you build your structs out of raw uh, pointer access. Um, and uh, the way Portable Native Client works is that your browser downloads uh, a, a file in this uh, portable uh, uh, intermediate format and translates it on the fly. In fact, the translator is actually itself a native client module that uh, is uh, that, that 
does that sort of last pass of compiling your code um, on the client, and then it gets run uh, in the conventional way of the client sandbox. So the last piece to, to put, put all this together is a thing called Box. Um, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's an emulator of a, a whole uh, x86 system that's been uh, written in C++. And the key feature that it has is that it's pure software. And uh, for NACL, the reason this matters is that uh, so native client does support, conventional native client supports uh, letting you generate uh, machine code on the fly. But portable native client right now does not support this. And so if you're uh, hoping to put your your, uh, your code up on a web page, you, you can put it in the Chrome web store and, and do whatever you want. But in the uh, um, on the open web, you, you have to do portable native client, and uh, you're not allowed to dy dynamically generate the code. And so if you're going to run an emulator, it needs to be an emulator that doesn't generate any code that just emulates whatever architecture and software. Um, and so I, I've uh, and it uses it runs on top of a uh, a portable graphics library called SDL that fortunately we have a port to native client, and as it happens, actually we had a very early port of uh, Box to native client way way back an intern of mine many years ago, um, and uh, I dusted it off the shelf and lo and behold it it uh, it's not, actually someone else may have nudged it along and they got it building in a portable native client, and so um, the, uh, this this emulator was able to run. So caveats. Unfortunately, it is too slow, um, as you will see in, in, in the demo. Or at least I, I think of it as being too slow. Um, the I believe the issue is just that uh, Box is just that slow when emulating the whole system. Um, even conventional Box running on your your desktop behaves almost identically in terms of speed. So the performance bottleneck isn't Nacl, it's it's Box. Um, ideally, you'd run an emulator that's faster, but um, the uh, that that, that was that, this was all I had time for. Um, the the current uh, thing that I thrown together has no permanent state. That's something that can be worked around with. Uh, there are ways for um, for HTML5 pages to be able to uh, to keep around some amount of state, and so I could allow the the, the color fourth image to to save and load from the local state. But I haven't bothered with that because I wasn't particularly doing a lot with with it. Um, so. Let's move on to the demo. So I'll give you a sense of what this looks like here. So on a random Sunday page here, I've got an HTML file. Um, it contains just a um, an embed tag that references uh, an NMF file, which is a, a NACL manifest file that lists uh, this box pinnacle.pexy. And uh, that's just a copy of box that's been built. Uh, it assumes that there will be a, uh, a tar file sitting uh, next to it at load called img.tar that contains uh, a snapshot of uh, the environment that you wish to boot. And uh, in fact, we can just download that, uh, that tar file. Look inside real quick here. Let's see. So, um, the, uh, oopsie, that's right, tar requires. Um, so, what's inside is uh, there's a copy of uh, the, a, uh, a generic BIOS that comes with, uh, with Box and a uh, BIOS for the VGA card. There's a uh, there's an image that I'm that I've called Linux image. That this is just because the file that I was working from was actually uh, originally built to to run a very tiny little limit Linux image instead of uh, the color fourth image. There's this uh, config file that's sitting here, and then the actual that's empty. Um, and then the actual uh, image in here contains uh, Box's uh, initial configuration and this color fourth. 2012 image that I got off the internet. Now, surprisingly, the link on Chuck's site was a link uh, to uh, to the old uh, to Jeff Fox's old site, and unfortunately, I, I gather the whatever uh, is keeping it up has not uh, kept a copy of the FTP site, and so uh, I, I had to scrounge about the internet for this image. Um, and uh, the config is is just uh, you know telling it to you know use SDL, run full screen. 
and uh, uh, just it just boot. And so what this is simulating is if you had a whole system, you were uh, putting a color fourth image in the floppy drive and actually booting uh, the system. Oh, SDL is simple direct media layer. It's a um, it's a library that it's meant to uh, be a, sort of a cross-platform wrapper around uh, this kind of thing you get from DirectX Windows. Um, and uh, but there's there's implementations of different platforms, including for native client. Um, so, anyways, when you have this all sitting here together, and you navigate to the page, you get something like this. Now, um, let me actually. Because we don't have a lot of pixels here, um, so you'll notice that there's a non-insubstantial. Oh well, yeah, it actually goes full screen. Um, you'll notice there's there's a non-insubstantial load delay. There's several different pieces of delay in here. One is that the um, when you first navigate to uh, to the page, the uh, the, the portable the, the Pexi uh, portable uh, native client executable is being downloaded. It's being translated to the architecture of the machine that you're uh, that you're on, and then uh, it's being run. At which point, it boots up the simulated image and, and goes through the, through the boot process. Um, and so you end up, you know, in uh, in the color fourth environment. And uh, this is actually uh, some community uh, variant on uh, the. Uh, oopsie. Um, on one of uh, uh, one of Chuck's early images, and so there's somebody. I don't know if this was in Chuck's original image or not, but there's some uh, a menu for for some various things folks have put in here. So, for instance, there's a there's one of these. Oopsie, and uh, you know somebody had has gone in a few. I, we should we can almost certainly track down the. Uh, okay. Let's not move it. There we go. Uh, and you'll notice it's like, wow, that's surprisingly slow. But anyways. Uh, it's not about a dancing bear. It's not how well it dances. Indeed. Um, so, yay, things move. Um, but it is, it is the... The actual environment, so you can jump to the code, and you know there's there's apparently this implementation of uh, uh life. The um, there are various things that could be done to speed it up. I my suspicion is that even in conventional box, what may be going on is that um, the way in which it's simulating the display and and moving it across may be inefficient um, because it's it's simulating a mode that uh, that may not be something that it can. Uh, rapidly blit to this to uh, to the display in in, the, in a format that it's neo likes. I haven't looked in in, in detail. Um, later versions uh, of say Rayforth, for instance, I did was not able to load in this environment mainly because they don't seem to boot anymore. Um, at least not with the configuration that I was able to emulate here. Um, the uh, fortunately they are runnable through Wine. For what it's worth, but the the, the uh, what motivated me to do this was uh, partially an act of preservation. Here is something where you go to a web page, and in principle, regardless of your your hardware, as long as you're able to to run Chrome, you can run this. And I have one further demo I should have grabbed up here. Um, so, for instance, we want to see really right about uh, behavior. This is a uh, this is actually an ARM. Uh, an ARM Chromebook. So this is an exceedingly cheap little, you know, $150 uh, machine that has uh, the same kind of uh, CPU in it you might find in your phone. Um, and so, assuming it decides to come up on the, oh, of course, I need to connect it to Stanford's Wi-Fi, which I, I haven't done. La -da 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 -da. Stanford visitor. Um, and uh, because because portable native client is in fact portable. Let's assume I can come on. Load, load. Um. Oh, 
I have to accept the connection. There we go. Okay. So if I, if I can navigate to the same location, and we now patiently, patiently wait, patiently, patiently wait, <laughs> whilst it loads, And translates. And actually, by, actually, the fact that we're seeing a black screen right now means that the translate happened. It, the, by the way, the translation is cached, so typically that's not the issue. So most of the slowness is here, is uh, is actually in the boot time and load time. Any time now. But and so we have the, the strange uh, roundaboutness of an ARM chip emulating or uh, running a, a static verification sandbox. Running an emulator of an x86 processor running colorful. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Well, I can use Chrome to access colorful. So, yeah. It's all, so this is a, this is up on a page. That, um, I, the link is in my talk, and I'll send around the slides, but. In principle, any any copy of Chrome can, you can navigate to a page to to this page, and it will just load and run Colorful there. And so the, the, the what partially what motivated me is just a desire to make sure that there was a snapshot somewhere of some version of Colorful that you could go to and just have it run and don't install anything and don't whatever just have it go. Um, I I wish it was faster or as long as help me out there. Who knows? But. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and Box is running inside of native clients, so it's able to run on a web page. Okay. Well, that's where the oh. Yeah. Well, Box itself is not very fast for running right. uh, yeah. Colorful, so that's part of the issue. Yeah. In fact, most of it, like if we if we were to hit, uh, oopsie. Let's, so I mean, the um, let me do it. I'll do a slight cheat here to. So if you want to get an idea of what, how much of how much time is is spent in each phase, so this um, I'm loading the HTTPS version of the URL. So from starting now, this portion is Pinnacle translating, 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 translating. So it's translating from the portable representation. Ooh, that's slower than I would have thought, or it's crashed on me, and I occasionally it doesn't like to be. Uh, Making me wonder if it's oh there it goes okay <laughs> touch it and then it goes and so that from there at this point now it's box running <laughs> so the first phase was presentation to the architecture of your machine so for instance on there we go arm this is a Mac this Mac uh, so on Mac Chrome uh, we always use the x86 32 sandbox so it's translating the x86 32 code and then there we are in Colorful so that second portion once the black box came up is how slow boxes and it's not that slow. When you run it just in like a normal a normal Linux system or something. So, um, so wait, let's go ahead. Could you run uh, any application in this environment and uh, files and stuff like uh, that? Yes, in fact, there is actually a guy. Um, if you go to there's a website, uh, nafelbox.com, who has gone ahead and packaged a bunch of. Uh, Demos of various apps uh, from, and so he's using, uh, he's actually using a different emulator, one called DOSBox, which I did not have as much luck running Colorful with. And so he's able to, um, oh, do I have the debugger turned on for this? No, this should be fine. So he's, he's noticed you're loading this, uh, this Pexy, and so he's taking a bunch of uh, the different games demos. He's got Turbo C. Packaged up, and he actually, I, I, I gather he may be charging money or something, but he, if you provide him your old application, he'll bundle up other DOS applications and put them in this, this form. And so, oh, there we go. So, DOSBox loads. DOSBox is, seems to be a generally a faster emulator than, uh, than, uh, uh, than Box, um, but uh, it seems to be a little bit more picky in terms of. Uh, the, the particular OS that you're doing. It wants you to actually boot DOS. It does not want you to uh, boot Color Force. <laughs> so. Um, and so there's, this guy has ported a range of, uh, of old applications using that kind of a, kind of a technique. He's got, uh, uh, and 
and, and more recently he's started uh ooh, let's try that actually where's where's one of his demos? Box. Games is it? Yeah, sport. Oh yes. Yeah. Really? Let me see the set. Let me see the set. Oh, yeah. Nice single player. So yeah, in terms of being able to all well, that loads, um, and, and notice here we're, what we're waiting for yet again is that translation time, which uh, which uh, my my team at work is actually visibly working on improving. So hopefully that will be you know faster. We're, we just had this is really just the very first public version of it, and so it takes a little while the first time. It caches that for future runs. So if you've been to the page in recent memory, it uh, it's able to uh, to cache on. The nice thing is that because it's translating to what amounts to your local? Uh, oh, it's downloading, right? So that's the okay. Uh, because it's translating to your local local architecture, it's about as fast as it's inflating. That. Yeah. This must be the set one. Probably. So, so this sort of this sort of thing has given me the you know the hope that many of these these older applications will uh, be preserved. But the point since my motive with with Colorforth was to make sure that things that didn't happen to run under DOS uh, continue to function. Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, let's get to the actual gameplay. How do I actually get to the there we go. How do I? There we go. Do I shoot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh. Uh, clearly, I don't know how to play this game. Uh, oh, it's down. Oh, it's like a. Ah. Oh, I'm dead. Goes <laughs> on. So. <laughs> I see a grin on <laughs> some of your faces. That's the place I worked at during the lunch hour. They were playing this network. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the remarkable thing I was noticing just when, just when I went in uh, yeah. into this game, did you notice that they play single player and play multiplayer? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who would actually, you know, who they're set up. Play online, mix the game, it's not a private game. Okay, it's cute. So then this guy's actually glued it together. To, and Box has a bunch of options, so you can set up whatever virtual network you're simulating. So, so what's old is new. <laughs> and what we probably would have to do to get up to the latest to pray for is get the versions. Mm -hmm. We'd have to get walk back to the first version and see where it dies. Yes, yes. Once we know where it dies, we can find it. I do have um, so you know I've occasionally toyed with trying to get uh, Wine to work inside a native client, but one of the unfortunate properties is that Wine has a lot of very rigid expectations about controlling the address space layout, and unfortunately, so does native client, and so the two don't play well together. Right. Um, but I haven't completely given up. There's various ways that you could, um, if you if you had a software simulator grafted into Wine. There are some things that can be done. The other thing is that long term we have an interest in allowing dynamic code generation, and so an emulator, uh, an emulator like Box is is kind of innately slow. You're all you know software, whereas uh, an emulator like QMU is able to uh, generate machine code that corresponds to you know what what you would have cached uh, for for this to, you know this block of machine. And then at that point you get something that approximates native speeds, obviously, uh, not not uh, you know some some measurable factor of it, but 
not, you know, lox is probably, you know, 1 to, one to 20, whereas QMU is probably more like half speed or a third speed. So. And it, it could be that when they added the stuff for, because they did go native Windows mm -hmm. uh, on Colorful. Mm -hmm. it, the, the one you got, obviously, is a DOS one. Mm -hmm. And once they went to Windows, it's probably where it's falling out. Oh, oh, certainly, yeah. So, so I may, I may take a poke at it again. The uh, it was it was interesting to get it up and just to see if it would work. I figured I had all the pieces and thought, well, you know, how hard would it be? Right? <laughs> well, it, if you crawl your way through some of the the listings I've got of of the full kernel, mm -hmm. there's a lot there. Oh yeah, there is a lot there. I mean, I gather this one. I mean, this one, for instance, does seem to contain the uh, the uh, the LZ seventy seven compression. So it's uh, that oh, switch. It does. it does, but it's uh, so it may be a matter of you know splicing this one together with a rainforest, or maybe there's some other change that's made it incompatible since then. I should say, by the way, that it's not that a rainforest doesn't come up at all. It's that it looks like it got hurt way and then fell over. So that's which is like it. Which is likely where you where you're at mm -hmm. is that the kernel may have even started mm -hmm. and now it's loading the code. <laughs> uh, it's very very possible. Okay. Anyhow, any more questions? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's any anything that can run Chrome. Uh, yeah. Any, uh, yeah, anything that can run Chrome except for the version of Chrome for the phones, because unfortunately it is, there's a limit to it. Mm -hmm. um, that may change in the future, but at the moment it's. Uh, I'm sh I'm sure there is one. There are some CPM emulators for DOS. <laughs> How many of you remember the parallax propeller chip for the web? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I saw this on the Indeed uh, one of the Indeed fourth groups, not Indeed LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, fourth groups. There are a couple of places on these days where you can learn about forth and converse about forth and LinkedIn has a couple of groups so it's not just comp.lang.forth and I also recommend to you the uh, the fabulous SVFig email lists and uh, 
if you're interested in SwiftX or SwiftForth, they have an online facility that has replaced their email list, so you might want to have a look at that. So I guess the thing to do here is just put this link on the on the website and in the email list and hopefully those interested can find it, but prop four should be enough to Google it. Apparently their code repository is code.google.com. Go figure. What about it? I'll scroll down. So this is apparently a fourth paraterm to talk to it. So I'll stick this in a, an email message and hopefully we'll somebody will get really excited about it and give us a nice talk about it uh, sometime in the near future. Does anybody have uh, anything ad hoc that they'd care to to talk about now or should we go to break early? Can we have a, a short break, like a five-minute quickie? All right, five-minute break, and then we'll get into Ting's talk, and we're going to be concluding the webcast at this time. So thank you very much for joining us, those of you that have, and if you're not listening to me, what else is new? <laughs>